This video will be a very brief introduction to the way that the periodic table is organized. So one way that we can split up the periodic table um, is along the staircase right here. Now this staircase separates the metals, which are the ones on the left, all of these are considered metals, from the nonmetals. All the ones on the right are considered nonmetals. However, the ones that touch the staircase, for example, like silicon and germanium, those are considered metalloids. So some of these metalloids have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So that's the most fundamental way that the periodic table is divided. Um, you'll notice it's also divided into columns and rows, so let's take a look at those as well. The columns are called groups, and the columns or groups run up and down. So like hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, they're all elements within the same group. You also notice that there's a naming system here. This is 1A, 2A. And we're not going to do too much with that right now. Uh, but the groups tell us how many valence electrons an atom has. We haven't learned what valence electrons are yet, um, but we'll get to that. Now the periods, or rows, those go left to right across the periodic table. The periods, or rows, tell us how many energy levels an atom has. Now once again, you don't need to know that now, but I just want to have this in, in, in the video so it's something that you've seen at least. So the periods are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, all of the elements in group 1, when they form ions, they'll have a charge of plus 1. All of the ones in group 2 will have a charge of plus 2. Now, don't get confused. That doesn't mean that magnesium atom has a charge of plus 2. It means that the magnesium ion has a charge of plus 2. So all of these elements on the periodic table, I guess, we would consider them as neutral, having the same number of protons and electrons. However, we know that elements can gain or lose electrons. So when magnesium or calcium loses electrons, it's going to lose two of them. So ultimately, it will have a charge of plus two. We're going to talk a lot more about charge later. Right now, maybe just write the charges on top of your table, and we'll familiarize ourselves with them more later. This is group 3A. It has a charge of plus three. All of the elements in this group, or at least, at least carbon, has a charge of either plus or minus 4. This group has a charge of minus 3. This group has a charge of minus 2. This group has a charge of minus 1. And this last group over here, group 8A, they don't have a charge at all. They have a charge of 0. Now, you're probably already familiar um, with these elements in the middle, they're the transition elements. Their charges oftentimes um, are not predictable. However, there's some that are. Aluminum, just like the number on top of the group suggests, has a charge of plus 3. Zinc is always plus 2. Silver is always plus 1. And cadmium is always plus 2. Now, like I mentioned, the rest of these transition metals, we don't know what the charge is. That has to be calculated. Group 1, they're very common elements. They have a special name. They're called the alkali metals. Group 2 has a similar sounding name. All of these are called the alkaline earth metals. The ones in the middle, like I mentioned here, these are called the transition metals. Group 7, those are called the halogens. And group 8, these are the noble gases. Now, I realize that our overview here of the periodic table was very quick, and I'm sure there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, but we're going to attempt to answer um, all of those questions throughout this unit. So for right now, just kind of um, make sure your periodic table looks like mine. Make sure you've numbered um, the charges. And you've also numbered the periods as well, and maybe even written in the names of these um, special groups.